In today's video, we're going to talk about Euler's totient function, which is denoted by this phi here. And it's a function defined on positive integers in the following way. For a positive integer, n is the number of integers co-prime with n, meaning the number of integers that have no common factors with n except for 1. And we can get an example of what this looks like by looking at a particular value n. Let's look at n equals 12. We'll list all the positive integers from 1 to 12 inclusive, and then we'll exclude the ones that have a common factor with 12 besides the factor 1. So for example, we can get rid of all the even numbers because they all have a common factor of 2 with the number 12. We can also get rid of the multiples of 3 that we haven't seen yet, which is 3 and 9. And that's pretty much it. All these other numbers here have no common factors with the number 12, except for the number 1. Um, and so, phi of 12 is the number of numbers we see here, which is actually explicitly 4. So the question we're going to ask is how to actually get a concrete formula for 5n in terms of data involving n. And the formula we're going to get is going to look something like the following. So what we'll prove is that phi of n is actually equal to n itself times a product. And each term in the product is going to look similar. And it involves these numbers p sub i. And these numbers are exactly the prime numbers that appear in the fra prime factorization of n. So where n equal to p1 to the e1, p2 to the e2 up to pk to the ek is the prime factorization of n. Okay. So our goal is to work toward proving this, and there are lots of different proofs that you can actually employ to do this. But we're going to take our intuition from what we did with the number 12 itself. Okay, so I want to start with the following case where n is actually a pure prime power. So let's say it only involves one prime, p1. So p1 here is prime, and e1 is greater than or equal to uh, 1. All right, so the question is, what is phi of n? Okay, so we're looking at numbers that don't have a common factor with n. Now, since the only prime factor of n is p1, we can look at the list of numbers from 1 all the way to p1 to the e1. And the number of these is p1 to the e1 itself. And we want to get rid of all the numbers that have a common factor with n. But since n is a power of this particular prime p1, we need to eliminate only the numbers that have a common factor of p1. Now, the numbers in this particular set that have a common factor with n are the numbers that are multiples of this particular prime, because this prime is the only prime that divides n itself. Okay, so the number of multiples of p1 in this particular set is the number of elements divided by p1, because we get a multiple of p1 every p1 elements. And this is p1 to the e1 divided by p1, which is p1 to the e1 minus 1. So phi of n is the number of numbers we see in this actual list, which is p1 to the e1, minus the number of things we throw out that have a common factor with n, which is this list of numbers right over here, the multiples of p1, and the number of them we counted to be this. So we'll subtract off p1 to the e1 minus 1. Okay, so now we need to figure out why that expression that we have actually matches the formula that we have up here. Um, and so if we factor out n, n itself is p1 to the e1, we'll get a 1. And then we'll have, because of this second term right over here, a 1 over p1. And so this gives us n times 1 minus 1 over p1. And so we have our result, 
for the situation in which n is actually a perfect prime power. Awesome. So let's see what we can do to figure this out for n in general. To figure out what to do in general, what I want to do is look at the specific case when n is a product of two powers of primes and see what we can do in that case. So again, we'll look at the numbers between 1 and n and then discard anything that has a common factor with this number right over here. Anything that has a common factor with n will have one of these two primes as factors, and if anything has one of these two primes as factors, then it'll be something that has a common divisor with n. So the number 5n is going to equal n minus the number of integers in this set that are multiples of p1 or p2. Now there's something interesting that happens here with these numbers. The number of multiples of p1 or p2 actually requires us to think a little bit about inclusion and exclusion because we have the multiples of p1. All the multiples of p1 are going to be things that are multiples of p1. And then we need to add in all the multiples of p2. But by doing this, we actually double count the things that are multiples of both p1 and p2. And so we need to subtract those off. So we'll subtract the multiples of p1, p2. Okay, in doing that, we'll have n. The number of multiples of p1 in this set is exactly n divided by p1 because n itself is a multiple of p1 and the multiples of p1 occur every p1 elements. So this is minus n over p1. And similarly, for multiples of p2, we'll have a minus n over p2. And then finally, we'll have a plus because of this double negative right over here p1, p2. Okay, and if we look at this, this has an n as a common factor. We get 1 minus p1, 1 minus 1 over p1, 1 minus 1 over p2, and then a 1 over p1, p2. And the latter actually factors into 1 minus 1 over p1 times n, and then a 1 minus 1 over p2. So we're getting close to our general form, and we can kind of see a way to go about doing this now in the most general case. So if we have n written as a product of powers of primes in the following most general way, then we're looking again at the set 1 through n and discarding the things that are multiples of any one of these primes. So we can create sets. Let's call a sub i the multiples of pi in this set right over here. Okay, then 5 of n is equal to n minus the size of the union of all these sets. Why do we say that? Well, the union is the collection consisting of all things in all of these sets. And we need to discard all things that are multiples of any of these potential PIs. But some of these AI sets have overlaps like we saw in the case when we had two prime factors over here. So we need to get rid of those overlaps using inclusion-exclusion. If we do that, we'll get the sum of the sizes of the individual sets minus the pairwise intersections up to the last pair, which is ak minus 1 ak, and then plus all of the triple intersections, so we get a1, a2, a3, etc., up to the last triple, and we do this with all the tuples up to the size of the product or the intersection of all of the AIs with a plus or a minus here, depending on whether or not the result will be positive or negative. Okay, so if we do that, we see that we can rewrite this as n minus, now all of these set sizes 
are n over the respective primes involved, just like we had in the previous case. So we get n over p1 minus n over p2, et cetera, minus n over pk. And then, because of the double negative sign here, we'll be adding n over p1, p2, plus dot, 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 up to n over pk minus 1, pk. And then we'll get the triples and the quadruples and everything else. And at the end, plus or minus n over the product of all of the pi's. And this positive or negative sign is going to be governed by whether or not we have an even or an odd number of prime factors in our prime factorization. And so if you look at this actual expression, this is precisely the expansion of n as a common factor times 1 over 1 minus p1, 1 minus 1 over p2, et cetera, up to 1 over 1 minus pk. So a very cool idea of how to establish a formula for Euler's Toshian function using inclusion-exclusion. There are actually other proofs. You can prove instead that this function is actually multiplicative and part of that proof involves some number theoretic ideas that are shown in this video right over here. So if you want, you can actually try to establish that and make a, any comments you want in the comment section about why this function right over here is actually a multiplicative function, meaning that phi of mn is equal to phi of m phi of n when the GCD of m and n is 1. If you can establish that, then you can write this thing here, phi of n, as the product of the phi functions of each of these, and then use what we did for individual prime powers to extract the formula in general. So give that a try, leave your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.